Good day, YouTube. Warbles on a lot here. With a sort of a longer, slower, more mellow explanation and continuation of the little short clip I put up last night regarding the London Olympics and Olympic fever and the possibility of Olympic fever being spoonerised into the fever Olympics in the sense that uh, a fortnight ago Ebola appeared in Uganda. So it said yesterday 31st of July 2012 on ABC Radio National's World Today program. I get ear fed by it you see. And uh, prior to that Ebola had been pretty much locked up in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Now it's in Uganda. Okay. Twelve people from one family showed up in a regional hospital sick with a influenza type sickness. When they commenced to bleed from the orifices and die in a way that made it patently obvious that they had Ebola, that's when the remainder of the patients in the hospital and the hospital staff ran away from the region into the capital city Kampala. And that's how come two people have died of Ebola in Kampala, which is the capital city of Uganda. 380,000 people and an international airport. Okay, now, on the comment thread below my little short clip that I put up last night, a person called At Torshable has pointed out that the first person to die in Kampala died nine days ago, that the Olympics have been running for five days, and that Ebola has an incubation period of 21 days. And I seem to recall hearing that it takes between three and seven days to die once you commence showing symptoms. I also, pretty sure I heard yesterday on Radio National that 60 to 80 percent of people who exhibit symptoms are going to die from it. So it's a very hef heavy style of a virus. It's um, a perfect candidate for what they call the Kyags virus. Kiss your ass goodbye sucker. And Kyags is a pretty good name for Ebola when you think about it. 21 days to wander around and infect people before you realise that you're sick. And then you die painfully and horribly from an untreatable virus. So, according to the virology, which I've been taught, and I have been taught a little bit, you know, once upon a time, back in the day, when I trained as a registered general nurse at Repatriation General Hospital Concord and graduated with distinction and went on to be sister in charge of the Vegetable Creek Hospital at Emmerville. Admittedly, I haven't worked in that capacity since 1986, but that was the high point of my health industry career. So I understand viruses and incubation and barrier nursing and reverse barrier nursing and in fact over the space of three shifts I personally managed to transfer a few patients around Ward 610 in Concord Repat Hospital and despite the hospital policy of not having a multi-resistant staff unit when the charge nurse went off shift on Friday afternoon there was no such unit in the hospital when she came to work on Monday morning she had five patients in a staff unit established at the back of Ward 610. She said she was going to clean those patients up and get rid of them. Two and a half years later when I graduated that part of the hospital was the multi-resistant staff burns unit. So I have been known to be a little bit influential under the counter behind the scenes in playing with multi-resistant virulent organisms but in that case it was a, a bacteria and uh, yeah that was a long time ago early 80s but I'm bright enough to understand that what should have happened before the Olympics is the Ugandan International Airport at Kampala should have been shut down 
that place should have gone into lockdown once they realised they had people dying from Ebola in the capital city where 380,000 people live. This is not really a debatable option from a public health standpoint. This shows us the Olympics starting. We're five days into the Olympics. Today is the 1st of August. Track back here in nine days, and that's the day the patient died in Kampala. They'd been sick for five days before that. If you run that back 21 days, you're off the graph. If you take your 21-day period from being infected to starting to show symptoms from the day the Olympics started, you come back here three weeks. And that's in the window of time that this patient came into Kampala. For somebody from Uganda to be infected with Ebola, to be contagious with Ebola and to not show symptoms until the closing ceremony or afterwards, they've had five days in Kampala while the first patient was still alive. Sorry, four days and then four days. So they've been exposed for anything up to eight days. All right. Them's the facts, honey bun. And according to At Torshable, the channel who watched my movie, Googled Ebola in London Olympics and found that I was the only hit. I was actually a Google whack there for a while. Never been a Google whack before. Pretty impressed with that. What he said is, nobody else is paying attention to it. There are 16. Ugandan athletes on their team. He said he can't find out how many team officials and he can't find out how many spectators from Uganda. But I've got a strange turn of mind and the first thing that throws up a flag as possible confirmation that this is in fact a problem is the following. While the sportingly inclined and the tabloids uh, cover on the front page and the back page with special gloating issues. Over there in England, what we've got is speculation and prevarication and obfuscation over the fact that people are starting to cogitate that there's a whole bunch of empty seats in the prime blocks where the corporate sponsors who've paid for the stadium to be built, who's staging the event, and they're not showing up. Now, could it be that people who can afford to build an Olympic stadium in order to get their logo on the building, could it be that they have superior sources of information to a hermit living on the edge of a clearing in a tin shed under a tree in the Australian regrowth forest? Okay, I found out that Ebola was in Uganda yesterday, but it's been there for a fortnight. And it strikes me as very interesting that the people who paid for the stadia don't want to sit in the corporate box in case they have to breathe the air that's getting sneezed by a Ugandan spectator somewhere else in the stadium. Yeah? Did you know that the difference between a pessimist and an optimist is that the pessimist is generally better informed? Savage bit of thinking, isn't it? Mm. I'm a hermit. I'm a hillbilly. I'm the fool on the hill. I'm a mad scientist. They give me a pension to sit out here under the trees and think about the stuff that everybody else pays no attention to. So apparently, yeah, I was a Google whack for a while. I was the only person on the planet who'd put two and two together. But we'll see what happens in the next week or fortnight. This could be as bad, proportionally, as the 1919 Spanish influenza outbreak, which killed 20 million people when the soldiers who'd spent four years killing six million of themselves, each other, when they came home from the victory celebrations in London, the Imperial Colonial Dominion troops brought Spanish influenza back to the entire British Empire and 20 million people died. Right, well, what's going to happen? when all of the people who've been at the Olympics for a fortnight decide it's time to go home. If they've started coming down with Ebola, 
Then those anti-aircraft missiles on top of the home units in the poor suburbs of London, they're not going to be used to deter terrorists, they're going to be used to enforce the quarantine. All you have to do is go and have a look at movies like Contagion, 28 days later, 28 weeks later, Doomsday. There's a lot of those movies out there. And instead of quarantining Uganda, the people who make decisions in the world decided to have the Olympics and try and take people's minds off the global financial crisis to try and get the economy going again in spite of the fact that you cannot have any economic activity unless you have an environmental surplus to be harvested or mined or filled or melted. And 5,000 years of economic growth has destroyed the global environmental surplus. It's not there anymore. You cannot maintain current levels of economic activity. The whole thing has to shrink. That's why Spain has 50% unemployment and Greece has the worst economy in Europe. Right? They wanted us to think about hopping and skipping and running and jumping and throwing and swimming and horsing and sailing and pole vaulting and throwing away hammers. Oh, how very sporting. Well, we'll see who gets a sporting chance at surviving if they've just mingled Ebola in the London Olympics. This is not a joke. If I'm wrong, yahoo yippee. If I'm right, then kiss your ass goodbye suckers. Sometimes, I think it would be nice if sport was against the law. This is one of those times. I really hope I'm wrong. Ciao.